2.7 The Pulse. Ali B here with Congressman David Schweigert. Hello. Welcome to The Pulse. If you say so. No, <laughs> no, this is my idea of fun. This is a blast. I know. I'm very excited. And he told me actually not to call him Congressman. He told me to call you David. Yeah. It, having met most members of Congress, you don't want to be called that. <laughs> That's awesome, David. We're happy to have you here. So honored. We've had tons of people come in and call in and let us know that they want to know your opinion about tons of stuff. But here at Even, they're wondering, what do you think of trade schools? Because at Even, I can study radio broadcasting and everyone can uh, get out to what they want to in their career field. And it, you support it, that. Look, it's actually a brilliant question because there is a certain arrogance out there that, and, and, and this is going to get a little technical, but it's quite factual. Okay. Where you'll hear see people say, well, going to university is the way to out of poverty or this and that. And actually, if you look around the world, what country has the highest per capita income in the world? And at the very same time, they also have the lowest number of university degrees. Now, they're well-educated, but they use trade schools and specialty schools and apprenticeships and that's actually Switzerland. Really? Switzerland actually has a fairly low number of university degrees, but the highest per capita income in the, in the world. And that's because they do lots of trade school and apprenticeship programs and these things where they're, they're great specialists in their field of expertise, but it's not sort of the U.S. sort of university grind out, get your bachelor's, and then, well, if you really want a job now, you have to go get a graduate degree. Yes. And... We need to sort of rethink what adds value to society and also what gives people optionality in their lives. And like, look, and I'll give you sort of a one-off. There's a guy at my house right now who is laying some copper pipe through part of my floor. Uh-huh. And I'm going to be paying him 85, 90 bucks an hour for the time he's there. One of my best friends who's a family physician is not going to get that much an hour. Wow. So you, you really have to start rethinking what are the talent, the skill sets that are in our society that we need that we're willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is that what do you stand for the most out of everything we have? Um, the We wanted to talk about we have a lot of things here, but we have a lot of people. Well, hopefully you don't have too many things. <laughs> Not too many, but we have quite the hissy about the right to discriminate. Now, that was just passed. Your personal opinion about that. You do have a really interesting sort of constitutional ethical question you have to sort of work through in your mind. U.S. Constitution, what, the second, third sentence in the First Amendment makes it really clear of your religious freedoms. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're right that the state, the government will never sort of have a state religion and therefore you get to practice as you, you feel. And then uh, 14th Amendment, in you, we have a um, uh, discussion of, you know, protecting individuals' rights. Um, so, you have to sort of find a balance test of, you know, if, if you carry certain faith, do you have the right to execute them in your daily life? At the same time, what's the balance test of making sure you're not also now crossing on to an individual's, someone else's liberties? I see. And, and so, you know, and this is actually when you have a compact, complex republic like we do, you're constantly trying to find these balance tests. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But we also want to talk about illegal immigration. Now, I heard you want to make sure that America is safe. And before we do that, maybe something like a work visa. Well, I, w I want to back up the conversation because this one's really important. Okay. Because so many people think illegal immigration is about an undocumented worker or someone that's illegal, it's over here. or it's you got to think of it in a huge, huge context. You have hundreds and hundreds of moving issues. And this is one of my frustrations. I'll have people say, well, don't you believe in immigration reform? And you turn to them and say, what part? Yeah. The visa system, the border security system, the transit system, the temporary work system, the STEM system. I mean. We have a lot it, of work to do. Well, there's a reason why even the Senate bill is a thousand some pages. And yet I'll have people who will come and advocate for it who've never read it. And, and this is why it's so complex because – um, I was in India in December, and I had a number of Indian officials come to me who thought that the immigration reform movement in the U.S. was racist towards them. Oh. Because the current law that are securing some of the proposals coming out of the Senate seemed to favor certain populations and certain work and employment styles that disfavor and favor certain populations around the world. So be prepared. It's a big issue. It's complicated. And one of my fixations is how do I come up with a plan 
that maximizes economic growth for the country. Absolutely. We are in, as American as we are in, a little bit of debt, but it seems like you're very... Not a little debt. <laughs> massive. <laughs> stunning. Maybe a no, little no, bit more. No, no. Seriously. If I came to you and said, um, there's this concept called unfunded liabilities. Or we use what's called a 75-year window because, you know, that used to be the average person's life. So today, you're how old? 17. Okay. When you reach my age, your tax burden will be double what I pay. And wow. it's already baked into the cake. It's already the law. It's already done. Because what's going to happen demographically and the benefits going out, you will have double the tax rate I have. So you're going to be paying higher taxes to pay for things I'm going to be getting. And over that 75-year window, the best math as of about three weeks ago done by something called the Mercatus Center is our total unfunded liabilities, that's debt and promises that we don't have money in the bank, is about 205 trillion dollars oh my goodness the entire wealth of the world is estimated about 180 trillion so we have promised more money than the entire wealth of the world yeah and i cannot understand why particularly people under 35 aren't bouncing off the walls saying we have to deal with this mandatory spending because it's consuming the entire budget so it's when we talk about the debt and deficit it's a big deal and it's your generation that's going to pay the price. Yeah, so what, what can I and other people like myself, how can we take action? The, the big word is called cross-generational wealth transfer. Okay. It means my generation gets to have things and you get to pay for it. Let the next generation pay for it. And this is a, it, it's, it's brutally unethical. And, but there are ways to fix it. For your generation to have a voice they need to understand that issue yes i completely agree it, look the, one of the things i'll also encourage you and whoever is listening get involved if you have any time find a campaign and go help mm. it's it does two things a it gives you an amazing understanding of just how human the political the election process really is <laughs> and the other thing it also does is it will help you build relationships of other people that care the way you do. Um, some of my friends I actually met literally as a teenager working on campaigns, and they're still my friends today. Yeah. Um, it, so I encourage you, it's more than just showing up and voting. It's take a little bit of that precious time and help someone go put up signs. Help them stuff envelopes. Absolutely. I mean, it, actually get involved. You'll find it's a fascinating way to make relationships. That's wonderful. Well, we've had such an awesome time having you here. Thank you so much, David. I've appreciated everything you say, and I'm sure everyone that's listening is loving it. But we just want to say thank you. Welcome to EVIT. I hope you've had a great time.